Hi, my name is Stephen Gray, and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Community Sustainability at Michigan State. Uh, and this is the first video uh, on a series on how to use the Mental Modeler software. And this one is the most basic. Uh, because Mental Modeler is based in fuzzy cognitive mapping, this first one is, what is fuzzy cognitive mapping? And fuzzy cognitive mapping was invented, so to speak, by this guy named Bart Costco, who's a professor at University of Southern California, who really came from more of a computer science background. And it's a certain type of concept map that is based in using kind of fuzzy associations between uh, two different variables that are defined within the concept map. So the, it draws on this idea of fuzzy logic, which is something you guys may have heard about before. And this idea about fuzzy sets is that it's not crisp. It's not a clear piece of information that it's either in the category or not in the category. So on the left-hand side, you can see um, kind of two categories of people. They're either tall or they're short. And there's not really, in, in the way people think about things in the human brain, we don't really think about people as just being tall or short. Those are the only two categories. Of course, we have kind of a fuzziness in between tall and short. And that's kind of viewed on the, on the right-hand side here. We see kind of there is this... Uh, gradation, where people are neither fuzzy nor, I mean, sorry, they're neither small nor tall. Uh, they're somewhere in the middle. And that's that idea of that uh, fuzziness. So we're, we're trying to draw on this fuzziness in the creation of cognitive maps. Uh, and cognitive maps have been around for a long time. People use them uh, in all different ways. And this is just uh, one example. And on the left-hand side, you see several different components that comprise or can be used in the concept map. And then what you have between these components are just relationships. And the traditional way in which concept maps are used uh, are, are kind of demonstrated right here. We just have these qualitative associations between these concepts. So if we bring those two ideas together about fuzziness and concept mapping, um, we can think of fuzzy cognitive maps as just a special kind of concept maps that are defined and parameterized in certain ways. And there's really two different types of uh, attributes of a fuzzy cognitive map. One is the components, and these can be thought of as stocks or something that can increase or decrease. And we also have the relationship between these stocks, and these relationships can be defined in one of two ways. There's the direction of the relationship, so which way the arrow is pointing from one concept to another. And there's also the degree of influence one component can have on another that can be positive or negative, and can either be parameterized between high and very, very low. So here's an example of an FCM from a great paper, Ozesme and Ozesme 2004 in Ecological Modeling. And it just shows an example of what an FCM is. And you've got, like we mentioned, these components. So we know that because it's parameterized in an FCM, wetlands can go up or down. And all of these various uh, ovals can go up or down. And we've got the relationship between these components, and those are parameterized between positive one and negative one. So whether if it's positive one, it's got a high positive influence, and if it's negative one, it's got a high negative influence. And of course, if it's zero, it doesn't have an influence. So when thinking about these relationships, we can begin to model systems uh, by using these different values. And we can look at the different types of relationships that are represented and say, well, from this first one, as the amount of wetlands goes up, it has a strong positive relationship on the number of fish. So that's why there's a positive one there. Um, in this second example, as lake pollution increases, the amount of wetland decreases, but only slightly, represented by 0 0.2. Um, and then we can also think about law enforcement as it increases, lake pollution decreases, about a medium amount. So I think you get the idea. So the rule of thumb for creating a fuzzy cognitive map is to think about um, two different things as you create your concept map. One, when you define the components, uh, it's got to be a component that can increase or decrease. And when you relate it to another component through an arrow, you think about it whether in terms of it's a high increase or decrease, medium decrease or increase, or low increase or decrease, and you parameterize that, you move from the qualitative description over into a value, any value between positive one and negative one. Some further reading on Fuzzy Cognitive Map is uh, the seminal paper by Bart Costco. And number two, uh, Ozesme and Ozesme, which I have found very useful as a roadmap. Um, and it's called Ecological Models Based on People's Knowledge. And they really give you a step-by-step how-to on how to collect these things. 
And in the next video, I think we're going to discuss how to actually develop a fuzzy cognitive map within the Mental Modeler software. Well, thanks for listening.